what's happened in the UK. Uh, is, has anything happened there which would be a surprise to an MMT economist? Well, the whole fiasco is in some sense surprising, right? Um, to anyone, really. Yeah, to, to yeah. anyone. But mm. in terms of like what made headlines, was mm. that, uh, did that come as a, as a total shock? Could we understand that from an MMT you know, framework? I think the answer is we can understand what happened mm. using the MMT lens or the MMT framework. I mean, obviously the British government, the UK is a currency issuer, right? The mm. British pound comes from the British government uh, they are the issuer of the currency. And I'm talking about the Bank of England, you know, as mm. uh, the sort of consolidated um, reference to the British government. But the pound yeah. comes from, from the UK government and it mm. doesn't come from anywhere else. And so what we witnessed was, you know, a new government come in and pronounce that they had uh, their economic package included you know, some subsidies to help with the high cost of energy for households and companies and um, sort of across the board tax cuts, especially aimed at people at the very top of the income distribution. So this so-called, mm. you know, supply side economics, trickle down, all that sort of stuff. And they lay out their package. And what you saw kind of immediately was basically uh, bond markets take a gasp. You know, and I think the gasp that they took was, hang on, inflation is running around 10% at the moment. We have an inflation targeting central bank. The central bank is going to look at this economic program and say, why are you doing quote unquote fiscal stimulus, right? Why are you, um, why are you doing this in an inflationary environment? This is going to force us to redouble our efforts. In other words, the expectation was that the Bank of England would likely move more aggressively in light of the announced fiscal package. That means mm. higher interest rates. And mm. if you're in bond markets and you think that the central bank is going to go even more aggressively with interest rates, what do you do? You do exactly what we saw uh, investors do, which is move out of gilts, right? Get out, try to get out of government bonds and, um, and so yields spiked, and then that created problems. Pension mm. funds with liability-driven investment decisions came under pressure and margin calls, and that intensified things until the Bank of England stepped in and kept interest rates from climbing even higher. That led to the beginnings of a panic, but the Bank of England was able to put the panic rapidly to an end because what they demonstrated is what we often say, which is that if the central bank wants any particular yield on government debt to be wherever it wants it to be, then it's always in the position to to deliver on that because it's got limitless pockets. You know, a lot of the press became, aha, this was bond markets tisk tisking the government and saying, we won't allow you to do this, right? We will shut your program down. And what it really was, was just a classic liquidity crisis. And in fact, rates increasing, had they increased you know, at a more measured pace would have actually been good for these pension funds. It mm. was the speed at which it happened that mm. resulted in this sort of situation where, you know, the value decreased and the margin calls came. Um, but I think that we're, it, it's a very important and potentially dangerous um, historical example now, because people can look back at what happened and they're already doing it and say, you see, this is why it is vital that governments produce credible um, packages, that they subject them to the appropriate evaluation by mm. the OBR or CBO here in the US or some you know, budget scorekeeper takes a look at the plans and costs the parliamentary them. budget office here. And now there's such <laughs> deference to these. Now the, yeah. the press and, and her uh, chancellor tried to just say, we're, we're not really interested in what you have to say. I thought that was fantastic, frankly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of people said, oh, this is just further evidence of how unserious their their plans are. And, um, you know, they're, they're going to get punished by markets for this. And then when yields, you know, sh moved sharply higher, people said, see, I told you so. You have to put your economic program 
before you know an independent body that evaluates the soundness of your fiscal plans and if you don't go through all the motions and and behave in a very fiscally responsible way the markets will come back and effectively you know shut your plans down and it's unfortunate in my view i i didn't uh, it's not that i was you know, enthusiastic about what trusts and company were proposing, you know, tax cuts mm. uh, for the very rich and so forth. But the government should have been able to carry out its economic agenda, it should have. And what happened is because of that, you know, the wobbling in markets and financial markets, the government blinked, trust blinked, and the Bank of England got its way. And it's not bond vigilantes that got their way. It's the Bank of England that got its way. And the British government, you know, backed off and tried to unwind. Well, we'll only go halfway with the tax cuts and we'll only do a little bit on the energy side. And ultimately, you know, as everybody knows, she was forced out. But I do think it's um, it's potentially dangerous to have this serve as an example if it's misinterpreted, if what happened is misunderstood as the so-called bond vigilantes coming in and being in control of what a currency issuing government can do for its people when it wants to commit resources, when it wants to commit to spending, or for that matter, you know, cutting taxes to create incentives or to support an economy, um, to, to have this example could potentially uh, hamstring policymaking in years ahead if if every government that comes after comes into it with the belief that the only way to proceed safely is to you know fully offset all spending so that you're never um, proposing to do anything that would add to the deficit, then I think it's going to be extremely hard to get you know good policy in that kind of um, constrained environment? I don't think it was a market wobble. I think it was a politician's wobble. I think yeah. uh, everybody with any talent really in the Conservative Party had already given up on being <laughs> Prime Minister. So they ended up with someone who was uh, not, again, the budget I thought was, was uh, slightly crazy in terms of the cut to the higher tax rate, but um, if Boris Johnson had still been prime minister, he just would have stared the government with the Bank of England down. The Bank of England would have had to back down because it's its job to maintain financial stability. Exactly. And that would have been the end of the story. Exactly. Really. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. If the rates aren't consistent, if, if you just sit back and say, well, we're just going to let markets take rates higher. Well, that's a policy choice. And if, if you allow that to happen and those rates become inconsistent, incompatible with your monetary policy objectives and or financial stability, then you are going to move, right? You're, you're going to intervene and you're going to reset uh, yields to either, you know, deal with the financial instability problem or to manage rates um, down to levels that are compatible with your macro objectives. So, 